All right, I'm guessing that some of you know what's going on. So lately, I've been handling switches, and usually most people find that kind of boring. So I haven't made a bunch of videos of it. But I went to the train show this weekend, and I want to show you what I got. Now, I didn't get nearly as much stuff as I usually get, and I was a little more selective because I've got so many freight cars now. So I was a little more selective. Plus, from one of my favorite sellers, who uh, is Patrick Alexander of Royalty, Minnesota, always has a pile of junk for me every time he sees me. And this time, basically, I paid him $30 take out his garbage. And I'm going to show you what I got out of it. Uh, but So let's take a look. Let's go with the junk first. Oh, no, let's. I pick up these two things, and, and one more, big forklift. They're kind of cool. They were not very much money. They're T-Bree. And I'm sure they, they'll look cool somewhere. And they were the right price. So I picked those up. And I'm going to clean them up a little bit. I think they're way over weathered. And the weathering that's on them, it, it's very dull and muted which is well for me anyways they're not sharp enough i'm going to sharpen them up now let's take a look let's look at what we got from the junk pile so when i went over to patrick's table as i always do i saw a junk box and in there of course i saw a dd40 that is broken and so that's what i wanted i so what do you want for this? He says, I'll tell you what, give me 30 bucks, but you have to take the whole box and get it out of here. Which I did, and I got a bunch of junk out of it. <laughs> I'm going to show you some of the crazy junk this guy finds. Crazy junk. So, first, let's start with this. I don't know what it is, but it is definitely a junker. Somebody scratch built this way back when. It might be partially metal. And it had this, so I mean, this is not not terrible. I can do I can do something with that. It is for the most part complete, and that I can fix up. This, after I get out this out of the paint stripper and see what parts are on it, I I don't know what I'm gonna do with it, but it is definitely I, I can see a typo front end. I can see another front end under here, and. I don't know what in the heck. This might be just scratch built out of styrene, some cab, and total junk. But I don't know. We'll get it cleaned up. And maybe there's something to do there. Maybe it just becomes spare parts. Then I got this, which I don't model these. This is a Bud RDC. And interesting how this was done. First, I have never seen this motor. I do not have any of these motors. It looks like it's the regular gray motor, but look how narrow it is. So, it, And it's got a kit in it. This one big flywheel. Now, I have some kits for repowering stuff that come with this one big narrow flywheel. So I don't think this is original. But these are definitely Tyco wheel sets that were made on this shaft for the rubber band. And then there's a bunch of stuff glued all over the place on this i'll get this cleaned up and but th this kind of interests me for my atherin hi-fi drive i don't know about this but it look it's an interesting solution to making the shaft larger which is one of the things i want to do on my gp7 hi-fi is make a larger shaft and so I never thought about doing something like that so this piece of junk and then we got this piece of junk so I don't know what in the heck is going on here I can see a big flywheel an AHM motor these trucks I can't identify them right off the top of my head although this one's got some atherin gearbox cover this one's got a taped cover possibly sort of what it looks like and this flywheel came from something and then this thing 
Okay, this is definitely a GP18. This cab, this is another cab just like that green one. So I don't know, and it's got a bunch of lead weights in it. So good find on the lead weights. They'll come out in the ultrasonic cleaner. And I got that piece of junk. And I got this one. Not sure what's going on here, but it's missing its drive shafts. Let's make sure you can see. So it's missing its drive shafts. But um, that's no problem. We make our own, so no big deal. Something could be possibly done with this. This was in the box. Don't need any more of these because you've seen my Atlas ones that I made. Not Atlas. The orange ones that say Atlas on them. They are still AHM C liners. This one, it's got a snow plow. That's how they dealt with that pilot that nobody likes. But I noticed one thing about this. See that metal plate on, in there? This has a kind of cradle on it that I really like. That um, I've seen on, on a friend of mine's E8s. And I think that's something that I, not to use, but to copy. And otherwise I don't. This shell, I, well, it's hand painted. I don't know what I'm going to do with that. I'll probably just strip it, throw it in the pile. Then, oh my lord, wait till you see this thing. This craziness. So, it's got a... a an old replacement motor. It's got a little flywheel kit. Two Atherton trucks. And what this looks like, they had taken the frame from an Atherton switcher. And then they added on a frame. And then they took these parts. Where, dang, they look an awful lot like Tyco. But I haven't seen this trough. They might have glued that in there. We'll find out. And then, so this thing, I'm assuming, was some kind of an electric. In fact, I'm guessing that it was meant to be this big pile of crap, which is, looks like a couple of sea liners mated together. It's got a couple of detail parts, that, and it's got some weights in it. That's going to get all stripped, and hopefully all that junk falls out. Let's see what we got there. Um scored this passenger with a bunch of weights in it all right so i scored some weights hey weights aren't that easy to get sometimes got a couple of shells here what this is i don't know not sure what that is it might be i don't think it's rdc because i don't see a headline oh, it doesn't matter i got it Amtrak shell. I don't model passenger trains. Price 10. This was in the junk box. This was more like price 10 cents. I got that. I got what appears to be a shell that had some detail work done to it. Because it's definitely got at least one replacement. Maybe these are all replacement fans. Eh, another piece of junk. Raw material is what it is. Then, also in the junk box, these two cars, another pickle car. I have no idea what I'm ever going to do with that. Another tank car. I've kind of sworn off tank cars. I had my fill after building a ton of shorty tank cars, which are always cheap, and the reason is because those kits take time. Then I got this. I don't know what in the heck this is supposed to be. But that was in the junk box. I got this little strange industrial switcher too. That is somehow cobbled together from who knows what. Um, there's a possibility that some of this is usable. I don't know about what's underneath it. Interesting. Oh, another one of these. Another one of these. I don't really model steam engines, but I do work on them. This got a bunch of stuff on it. I don't know what I'm in. We'll worry about steam engines another day. Now, going back over here. Look, when I saw this in the box, I didn't pick it up because of that. Oh, it's an S scale? Or what? No, it's not. It's got a giant weight in it, though. 
some kind of a Bachman underframe. It says RS12 Baldwin. Well, an RS12 is an Elko, but this is definitely a Baldwin end. Steam cabs. I don't know what this business is all about. And I think this is. It seems like it. It's brass or something. I don't know. That one is going to get stripped. This paint on here is so thick. It's coming off, and we'll see what parts we get out of it. It's got. Look at that. Look at the front ends. Salvage from somewhere. A tunnel motor. Oh no. I see a giant gob of glue there. And when I took this apart, I found that the frame had been elongated. It's got this motor in it. Another one I don't have, but I wouldn't use. It's got two AHM SD40 trucks. Actually, a partial truck and a truck. Some kind of junker. Picked this up for $2.00. Another AHM, which is complete except for its roof. Not a problem. I can make a roof, or I can change the but it's complete. I don't need the motor, but although these motors, now that i found a good use for them, I don't junk them. These motors, they have a special use I did not know about, and that is mounting them vertically. Mounting them vertically in things that use a vertical shaft, and they're, like, really good at that. Especially if it's super heavyweight. Okay, then I got in that same junk box this. Now, there's something wrong with this. I don't believe this paint scheme came out when this underframe was made. So I don't know what's going on with this. I haven't opened it up to find out, but I see a bunch of glue. And it's almost certainly there's going to be a bunch of stuff in there. I got, of course, I got the big DD40. And this one. I might not strip it. I might erase the letters, but keep it the paint scheme and try to do something with it. That's what my initial thought. It may turn out I just strip it and, and do it the usual way. Okay, I found this marked as does not run. So I got it for just a couple bucks. This is, it should be, it says Bachman, but anyways, this shell is a catered shell. And the cater shell is considered pretty decent. So I like GP30, so I picked this up just because it was there. It does not run, obviously. It's not something I can't fix. Then, okay, one of the coolest things I found was I found this on a table. And nobody wanted it. Take a look inside. Open frame, motor. This is a, it's a very old bathroom. Possibly from about 1961 or 2, I think, is when they did that. But this is an Athern GP30, and I didn't have one. So I picked that up. We can definitely make that run. And, you know, it doesn't have a scale with hood. And people criticized it heavily, so they redid the tool, and they couldn't make any more after that. But I didn't have one, so I picked it up. So that's not bad. So that's kind of what I got from the junk box. Now, let's see what else did I get. So then, there was another guy there. And, uh oh, first, I went over to a table where it's like, it's like three for five dollars or something. So I picked up this gondola. Yes, you're like, why would you ever buy that piece of junk? Well, wait till you see what I can do with this. This is going to be cool. I'm keeping it Pine Hill Log and just yellow like it is. So I'm going to do something with it. And then fix trucks, coupler, and we'll be, we'll be good to go. This is going to be really cool. That's a good piece. It looks a little weird. That's because it's just shiny plastic right now. But once I dress that up, I'm not going to heavily weather it. No, it's going to look really cool. I found this Bakelite Plastics. And lately, I've started to really like things that have big words on them. And Bakelite is a polymer, plastic, and you don't see it so much anymore, but there are things made of Bakelite. And so I thought, oh, that's kind of a neat piece. I don't have one of these. So I picked that up for a couple bucks. Got this out of the 
what was it, 10 for, 10 pieces for something, so I traded a friend of mine, I bought one thing on, on like the 4 for 5, and he bought a bunch of stuff out of the 10 for like 4 bucks or something, add this to my fleet, fix it up, it'll be good to go. And at another table, this is an old tin plate. And I've got a number of these now. This was free. He said, Dude, take it. And I said, well, all right. Then. What my plan is for these, I'm not going to weather them. I'm not going to strip them. I'm not going to repaint them. I'm going to clean them, fix the trucks and couplers, and then I'm going to make a, a train out of, I've got about 10 of these kinds of things. And I kind of like these old tin plates. They don't need to be weathered or nothing. They just need a little repair just a little bit of repair they'll make for a cool train I don't model old time stuff but um, they got kind of a neat little look to them that I like and then because I took one free one he said you also have to take this because it's also free this if I ever do something with this it's going in the stripper and it'll be something else so someday when I decide I want to do a bunch of those that one's on the way back burner. I picked up this bathtub gun for a couple bucks. It's kind of neat. I like it. I decided I need more color in my rolling stock. So before we get to this row, I have a friend that works at Hormel, so I found one of these. He likes these. I picked up that. Then I saw these. They were like a dollar. Actually, one of them. This one I got for free because I bought some other stuff. This one was like a dollar. So I believe they're both Tyco and, or, or something. I don't know what they are. But yeah, yeah, they're both Tyco. Okay. In the past, whenever I've had these, I've always stripped them and repainted them into something else. These I'm not going to do that. I'm actually going to fix these up the way they are. And they should be pretty cool. I mean, I don't usually... I got a lot of plug door, especially beer cars. But, um, I can do something with these. And they didn't cost me, like, anything. And then, these two also cost me, like, nothing. And I have a whole bunch of these. This particular Erie Lackawanna... When I work the magic on this thing, these look so... Nice. I, I you don't strip them or nothing. Don't keep keep the paint. They just need a little panel lining and a little dry brushing, and they're amazing. Same with the chassis. They really stand out. And I've got probably four or five of each of these, and they kind of look cool as a group. Okay. Naturally, I saw another one of these to add to my probably ten ten of these now. When you get, get fixed up. And they also look really cool when they're fixed up nice. Southern. It has big letters. That's what attracted me to it. This one got thrown in with a bunch. I have some others like this. I'll fix that up. It'll be good to go. But then I saw these M and St. L. Minneapolis and St. Louis. Peoria Gateway. Okay. Take a look at those. All right, I like them because they got the big letters on them. The other thing I like about them is some of them are like unpainted plastic. Some of them, if there's a bunch of those, there's a slightly different color on some of them. No problem. These are going to turn out to be really, really sweet. And I love stuff where they really put big letters on. And one of the reasons I love that is, is at operating sessions, last few times, I've worked a really tough yard. And it is kind of hard to, it's an, on a card system. And in the yard, I need to count down cards and make sure the trains are what is in my card stack. These, in that situation, would be easy to spot. And they're going to, I, these are things where you, 
where I can spend a little bit of time and get a huge payoff on them. And they cost next to nothing. I got a group of couple, then I got a group of like six of them, and they really didn't cost me hardly anything. So that's why these are going to turn out really nice, and I like those. So that's kind of what I got from the train show. Not, I didn't really go for any new stuff or anything really special or great stuff. I just went for raw materials this time. And these, all these cars are good raw material. And what's good about them is I'm not going to recycle them. I'm going to enhance what they already are. So I'm going to push what they are kind of to their limit of looking cool. And they will. They'll look really cool. And these locomotives, the DD40 was what I wanted. And I, because I have so many of them, I didn't really care what condition it was in. It's not in good condition. And that's no problem. It's, we can do heavy duty work on this. And this other stuff, a lot of this is going to go on the junk pile, but all of it is getting cleaned. It does not get to go to the junk pile. It does not get to go sit in the junkyard unless it has been cleaned. And that's kind of my new rule. And lately I've been taking stuff that is in the junkyard, cleaning it, and then putting it back so it is ready for that project where, you know, I need something. And I can do something special with it. So that's kind of what I got. Just done sorting the junk. I'm going to start getting clean them. And I'm going to show you. I'm going to make a video about doing these cars. I'll probably do one on video for you. And show you that, you know, sometimes not everything on your layout's got to be really, really super nice. It doesn't all have to be, you know, these have truck mounted couplers. Okay, I'm going to get rid of that. These are going to get Katie couplers. And as a group, they're going to look cool. As just a single, you'd say, oh, look at that piece of junk. That's crap. But as a group, when they're all done up, they are going to be really nice. And the cool thing about them is they're not identical. So when I work on these, each one will, will have... It's like a in, in computer programming. They're a class, but each member of the class is its own object. That's what's going to be neat about it. And then, who knows? Who knows what's going on over here? A lot of it's just going to get paint stripped and it's going to go straight to the parts, straight to the junkyard. Them steam engines, I'm not really going to touch those for a while because I don't know what I want. I don't operate steam, although I am working on that one. On that one big one that one's going to get operated those little ones see what we can do a little industrial switcher it could be something maybe depends on what we find when we clean it up but that's what's been going on and here's my advice to you going to a train show um see a thing when you see a thing like this this is getting used just the way it is that's kind of the nice one that I got for the day. Otherwise, see a thing not for what it is, but what it could be. Now, how often do you see stuff like this? And you go, oh my God, if I brought that into my workshop, those could be cool. Go with that. If, these, if you can score a nice big train like that, they're going to all go together, then... I'll show you how I do it. I don't weather them. I consider what I do sharpening. I'm going to sharpen them, and then they're going to look they're going to look fantastic together. It'll be just another another train. I'm, I'm I saw this too. So these guys they gave me one of these. So they make these for their loads. It's not just on a piece of cardboard. That's kind of interesting. It's just fits in there. It's easy to lift out. Those rocks are mighty big. I wouldn't use rocks this big. But I kind of like the way they the way they just glued it to a piece of cardboard. And and the, the train that they had these on, it was great because these are heavy. Very heavy. 
So I did pick up some of those big rocks when I was there so I could smash them down. And they had some that were smashed into like ballast size and they looked really good. And that's what I could do with this red train. It's gonna be, it's gonna be something. We got a lot of work to do. Still got a lot of track to lay. We gotta get, get working on old Colossus over here. I have not worked on Colossus for a little while for the sole reason if I keep working on them, I'm not going to get any track laid. And I got just this section that you're seeing right here down the middle is the only place that needs track now. Everything else is in. And then I'm going around replacing any old switches with, with my bench lead switches. So that's where we're at. And we'll see what happens. We'll see what the next project is going to be. I am getting to that. GP7 with the high fi with the high F, not high fi high F, with the rubber band drive in it. I'm going to take a close look at this. I got a box full of these parts. These are wheels. Tyco. Interesting application. I doubt this thing works. It just, it doesn't look like it was set up great, and that's why it was in the trash pile. But we'll see. No, I'm probably not going to use that, but I am going to uh, examine how, what they were thinking when they made it. All right, that's it.